Right, um, time for our final presentation before afternoon tea. Stephen Ellis talking about operating in an ephemeral world. Right, hi guys. Uh, hopefully, yet yeah, mic seems to be working and everyone can hear me. And I'll, I'll try and put some energy into this because we're heading into the afternoon break and it's been a long day for our first day here at LCA. Um, this is possibly a little bit different from my typical kind of LCA talk because there's not quite as much technical in as I was originally aiming for, but I'm hoping out of it that's going to make you guys think about things that are going on that are impacting you as system administrators. And with luck, a whole load of you over the rest of this week are going to come and find me and have a chat to me about some of the things that are impacting you and the, th the steps you're taking to address them as we approach this cloud-centric world that seems to have taken over LCA this year. So I really want feedback from you guys over the course of the week. So one of the things, I, I started with the topic. Um, I had a good idea what I was going to talk about and then the actual content of my talk actually became quite ephemeral because I was actually looking at a couple of products that, that Red Hat has about approaching cloud, operationalizing cloud and then of course we go out and buy some more technologies and we start adding to this technology stack and so the actual story is constantly changing in itself it is quite ephemeral. Um, but as we look at what you operate today versus what you operated traditionally in the past, there's a huge disconnect. There's a big level of change infecting us all. So when I'm thinking of a topic, a story, something I can talk to you guys about at a conference like this, first thing is why. Why do I want to talk to you? What am I trying to impart? Where are we trying to go? Um, so normally, we're talking here from a traditional system administrator's perspective. We're talking about TIN. We're talking about TIN in your data center, TIN that you manage. You, even if it's infrastructure as a service, you know what this environment is. You know, we all know when we're dealing with a new project, there's nothing quite like the project manager or the project owner requesting us to go down the machine room to see the flashing lights. Even when we're living in a virtual world, we can at least point them at the VMware cluster or wherever it is sitting in the corner. There's still some flashing lights. There ain't a lot of flashing lights anymore. Take them outside and point them at this big fluffy thing and say, you're a micro element within this giant cloud out there. You know, it doesn't quite have the same cachet. So another thing was to look back at where we've come from. I mean, the first time I spoke at the Sysadmin Miniconf was five years ago in Melbourne. And, you know, what we were talking about then was very traditional infrastructure. But a big focus here from my background back then was very operational, standing up environments, managing them on behalf of large corporates. And it was a big focus on reuse, reusability and reliability. We had to build these big managed environments, be they physical or virtual. We had to scale them, both scale them from an operational perspective you know, could we continue to deal with the ever-growing environment, but also be able to put out systems that could scale? You know, being able to replicate web servers, application servers, database servers, as, as the business wants in a timely fashion. And I had certain, you know, aims, certain things that we wanted to achieve, and I felt at that point we pretty much had hit them on the nail. But how? Many of us are still able to apply these things when we start looking at this split world, this world of traditional infrastructure and cloud infrastructure. There's actually a bit of a disconnect here. You know, for us it was always build and continue to manage. It was never build and walk away. Sometimes these days it seems to be build an SEP. SEP is someone else's problem. Once it's been built, it's handed off, and we kind of tend to forget about it. And sometimes we're not the guys building it. Often we're being given pre-built environments because this whole DevOps trend and the developers have gone off and spun up a prototype in Amazon or Rackspace or somewhere and then it's an inherited environment that we've got to operationalize and manage. How do we deal with that? And are we giving within this DevOps landscape them some standards to work with? I think that's important. You know, we've been working on our operational standards and our build environments and our templates for OS and application delivery 
And now they're going off doing their own thing with their own stand well, often a complete lack of standards. From terminology, we're moving away from operating environments to be to orchestrating the environment. You know, maybe in a few years we'll be calling this the cloud orchestrators mini conf rather than system administrators. You know, we're taking a different view, we're moving workloads around, you know. And our workloads aren't static. You know, we've got a different approach to agility. We're not just moving workloads within a VMware farm or a virtual cluster. We may need to work, work, move workloads around between different cloud providers, between traditional infrastructure and cloud infrastructure. How far are we in this room down that journey? How far we, are we operationally within that journey to the cloud? So to you in the room, how many of you operationally are 100% cloud today? <laughs> and by cloud I don't mean private cloud, internal cloud, I mean using entirely third party cloud providers and completely made the transition. And well I'm amazed because um, I've bounced this off a few people and, uh, and I've had times where they've come back and said, no we're done, we're finished, you know, everything's living off in the cloud and you know, we're all good to go. And often though, there, there's still an issue with that because they're actually entirely focused on one cloud provider and I'll come back to that in a minute. So most of us are still stuck with our traditional silos, our traditional compute, network, storage, internal environments. One of those silos may be our internal cloud, it may be we have virtualization capability. Actually you look at these silos, look behind them, the cloud is ever pervasive. They're reaching to the cloud. Yeah. And you know, so we still have our silos, we still have all these environments to deal with. So what can we do? Come on, some of you have had to have a senior manager, a CIO, someone in the business come up and say, I've made the decision, we're going 100% cloud. Yeah, how well has that gone for you? It's anyone, you know, obviously none of you put your hands up when they said, are you 100% cloud? So it's obviously not gone so well, you know? Um, so we take a different approach, we choose some workloads, we look at things to move to the cloud. And what happens? We simply end up with another silo. We're just having something else we've got to manage, often with different tools and processes. And if you're going to go to the cloud, where are you going to go? Which cloud provider? Which cloud technology? And if you want to use a number of these cloud providers properly, you start embracing technologies that cause lock-in. How easy is it for you to lift something out of a Google application in the cloud and go and host it in Rackspace tomorrow? To move technologies from Amazon where you're starting to leverage some of their really cool proprietary features. You know, just in a session now where um, in, in one of the other mini comps where one of the guys was talking about the fact that they chose to use non-cloud specific technologies for their cloud hosting because they actually had portability. They weren't stuck with the Amazon database platform, the Amazon load balancing platform. They weren't tied to every piece of the Amazon technologies. So you've got to make the right decision, but ideally we want to be able to deploy across any cloud. We also want to be able to continue to use the technology that we use today. I mean, there's this, this term being bandied around and different vendors seem to have different positions on it. There's this one about the moving to hybrid. Hybrid. I don't know. Hybrid always makes me think of cars. You know? You gotta love terminology. The red hat term for this is the open hybrid cloud. We love open. Open's great. Yeah, we open everything. Yeah. Um, unlike some of the other vendors out there, though, our open model has one big differentiator includes physical. Can you honestly say that everything that you run today can go to the cloud? Can everything you do today be virtualized? I mean, you, you know, we're talking at the cloud in just more than compute. We're talking about storage and network and all the other layers involved. If you've got petabytes of highly confidential data, where are you going to put it in the cloud? Do you have a local cloud provider? I know for us in New Zealand it's a really interesting issue around um, data sovereignty. For government departments and a number of other financial institutions, where do you put that data? 
you still end up with some things in your data center. There's still businesses that, for the foreseeable, will have some kind of internal infrastructure. Over time, that physical infrastructure may largely be internal cloud, but they want to leverage multiple external cloud providers. Do you have the tools today? Do the tools you currently use extend beyond your internal infrastructure? If they do, great, come and have a chat with me. I really want to hear about what you're using. Because a lot of the tools seem to focus purely on cloud. I mean, we look at things like Puppet and Chef. They're great tools for uh, managing, configuration managing, and operating environments. And you can extend them outside the cloud, you can use them internally. But in terms of truly operationally owning, when I go back to my talk from you know, five years ago, truly operationally owning the environment, they don't go quite far enough yet. The, the stuff Ubuntu's been doing and Canonical's been doing with Maz and Juju is quite interesting because they do actually take a perspective around metal as well as virtualization and try and extend things out. Of course, our golden boy of the conference, OpenStack. Woohoo! You know, this is what everyone's going mad about. But if you operationalize OpenStack internally and you try to use a third party OpenStack service, you're not necessarily interacting with it the same way. You're not necessarily going to be able to reuse it. We don't know yet. This is all still being defined. You know, there are some providers out there, the likes of HP's OpenCloud, that are delivering things using things like OpenStack. But can you move seamlessly? But will no and oh, no no and also it, OpenStack won't be the only player in town. So do you have the technologies to give you that open choice to give you that open hybrid cloud? So over the last 12 months, we've started to get more and more access into some of the tools that we have at Red Hat that are available as part of the open source community in this space. Um, and two projects in particular I really want you guys to take a look at. Aeolus and Catello. Now Aeolus was discussed briefly earlier today. Aeolus is about opening the cloud. It's about orchestrating the cloud. It doesn't give a sh which cloud, right? Can, the whole point is it uses the technology to hook into multiple cloud providers. So you have your single pane of glass across multiple cloud providers for your workloads. Those workloads can be Red Hat Linux, they could be any Linux, they could even be Windows. This is an encompassing technology across multiple cloud providers. Catello is about you operationalizing your Linux workloads in those cloud providers. And the great thing, taking a proper Unix and Linux perspective on this, it's not just a couple of projects, it's made up of lots of little sub-projects and beyond this sub-projects and sub-projects. It's like, you know, pipes. And scripts, it's great, you know, linking things together, the proper, you know, Unix, Linux way. So Foreman's all about bare metal. Delta Cloud is all about reaching out to cloud providers and hooking them all together. Pulp is about you managing the content, the packages and components you want to deliver out, regardless of whether it's your private cloud, your physical infrastructure, or your public cloud. All these things glue together. So this, from a Red Hat perspective, is what we call cloud forms. This is a big thing that we're shouting about at the moment. But from an open source perspective, the open source versions of these projects stretch way beyond a, a simple Red Hat platform. I think they're so cool. They're so interesting. And they're changing so quickly. So, you know, we've just recently made a major acquisition for a complementary technology to plug into this. The whole point of this is this is going to be ideally complementary with most of the cloud and, and uh, operational stories you're hearing here at the moment. You know, there's no reason why this can't manage OpenStack, can't manage HP's cloud, it can't talk to Amazon, can talk to all these different things. You get one set of tools regardless of physical, virtual, private cloud or public cloud. You want to pick up a bit more information on this? There's some references here. Um, highly advise you go and have a look at James Lubocki's blog. He's a Red Hat employee, but he tends to blog really heavily about operational tooling in the cloud. Uh, he has quite a wide remit, and, and he digs, digs deep into some interesting stories. He's a great guy. 
Uh, go and have a look at what's available today from the Aeolus project site, particularly if any of you guys are playing around with um, Fedora or Red Hat technologies. It's very easy to go and get it up and running. You can point it at VMware, you can point it at Over, you can point it at Rev, you can point it at Amazon out of the box and go and plug these things together and deploy the same applications, the same underlying OS builds across all those platforms. Manage them from a single point. I'm here all week. Please come and tell me what works for you and what doesn't. I really love to hear about it. I'm getting some very interesting conversations with my customers locally in New Zealand at the moment in this space. So I really like to hear from the wider knowledge base here at LCA about what does and doesn't work for you guys. So, any questions? Hi. Of the people who said that they have moved completely to the cloud, how many of them were in countries where the ISPs nickel and dime you for every single byte you try and get in and out of your organisation? Um, surprisingly, there's a number of organisations in New Zealand that are 100% cloud. Uh, one that you, I oh don't know, of course, now's the moment I forget their name. Zero, thank you, Simon. Zero are entirely cloud. It suits them. Whilst they're based in New Zealand, they're hosted there, they do the development there. Most of their customers are naturally New Zealand based. For them, the cloud model suits them. They're able to scale as they need. I believe they use Rackspace as their main provider, and they're 100% cloud. I know a number of startups. Greenfields is great. Greenfields, yay! We can just go do the development, do the deployment, run entirely in the cloud. Um, I'm talking to someone else at the moment who has a need for a hybrid in a situation where they need to share terabytes of data, tens, to, close to 100 terabytes of data in the cloud, but they also need an internal replica. They also need replicas with some of their customers. They need geo replicas around the world. And they need to be able to manage this as a single entity, have a single view. It's an interesting concept for them. But yeah, there are a number of customers of number of New Zealand businesses that have gone 100 percent cloud, but they're largely using US cloud providers. But it sounds like their business model is to sell to the US world. To sell to the world, yes. So so um, one little comment on that, a lot of like Facebook games are being run entirely in the cloud. Yeah. Um, I had a question for you. Are you familiar with the work being done to add bare metal support to OpenStack? Uh, yeah, I caught a little bit of some of the stuff earlier and I want to catch some of the rest this week and that's going to be quite interesting. Take a look at its capabilities. And one of the nice things, if I just jump back here and the componentized nature, is there's a couple of things that from OpenStack that may get reused and vice versa. There's a couple of things, sub-projects here that Red Hat's reusing in wider areas of the space. So it's great that because of the componentized nature, we all get to use bits and pieces of each other's technology set, which is great. Okay, thank you all. I think it's break time. It is indeed break time.